Good afternoon, everyone. A look at sea ice, middle of June, Newfoundland. IPCC tells us we're at the lowest ice ever seen, yet rescue operations need to be carried out due to the excessive ice trapping vessels. Canadian Coast Guard says they've never seen anything like this in the area before. This icebreaker here that had a contingent of global warming scientists to study the melting ice in the Arctic had to use this vessel to rescue the ships trapped in multi-year thick ice. But the global warming, of course, they have an excuse for this. It's because the thickness of the ice actually reduces and makes it more mobile. Which makes me ask the question, if there was even less ice in 2012 and it was even more vulnerable to break up, why didn't the Coast Guard see it at that year? Why is this year so special? Oh, we're entering a grand solar minimum. We're expecting more sea ice. And while you're watching, please remember to subscribe to ADAPT 2030. This photo just taken last week shows you the amount of sea ice off of Newfoundland. Now we've been told all along that this is one of the lowest ice extents ever and it might even get ice free this summer. Yet there's still this much ice out there and these are the photographs that are coming. All the IPCC predictions and models, they never show you an actual photo, but this is an actual photo of how much sea ice there is in mid-June. Canadian Coast Guard says they've never seen anything like this before. It is completely off the charts unusual. So much so that the ice was thick enough to trap several vessels. One of them sinking, ended up in helicopter rescues, diverted icebreakers to get out there to cut channels for the fishermen that were stuck. Canadian Coast Guard verifies that this ice was more than two meters thick, unusually heavy, trapping multiple vessels. Image here for you of the vessels off Newfoundland. Close up. And for a while there during this news feed, they were unable to actually free these vessels, which means extremely heavy ice. They couldn't even tow it out. They were worried about moving the ice around trying to break through because the holes of the fishing vessels were so fragile when these three meter thick pieces of ice would scrape up against their hulls. And also notice that very little or no ice is left in these areas usually at this time of the year. But right now this is what the coastal area is looking like. Sinking vessels. You could do your own research through Google. Fishermen rescued by SAR helicopter. Thick Arctic ice traps fishing vessels and diverts global warming research crew. Which was on one of these icebreakers by the way. Coast Guard icebreaker here was going to escort 30 plus scientists out to study the effects of global warming on the ice cap in the Arctic. But that vessel was diverted to rescue the fishermen. They had to abandon the expedition throughout Hudson Bay and other areas because of hazardous ice conditions. And I put an asterisk in the second paragraph. It was the very first leg of their 133 day journey and they couldn't even get out because there was so much ice. And this is supposed to be a global warming proving expedition. And of course, they had an excuse why there's so much ice. Multi-year ice, reduce the thickness of it, and then it becomes more mobile. So they're saying somewhere if the ice is now less thick, now it's not even about the coverage anymore because the coverage is increasing. Oh, now it's about the thickness. This is an image here of them going through ice this week. That's still how much ice is up there in areas where there shouldn't be ice. Take a look at this, June 18th, 2017. How much less ice does that look like compared to the orange 1981 to 2010 average? And NSIDC, which I linked below, also has this graphic which shows 2017 there's more ice than there was in 2012. And if it's because the ice gets so thin that it gets so mobile that it can move to other areas, why didn't we see all this in 2012? There should have been more ice in 2012 down in these areas around Newfoundland than we're seeing today. That is unexplainable for global warming, but when you're expecting a grand solar minimum to intensify, this is the forecast out. The lower the energy and solar activity there is, the cooler the temperatures on our planet get. It's a direct relationship. 
forecast is going into a grand solar minimum. There's more ice now. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And while our weather starts to fluctuate and our crops are going to have a more difficult time growing, which means lower yields, you'll want to talk to Bob Kudla at Trade Genius. They are also looking at the effects of the grand solar minimum on grain production. He'll be happy to talk with you. TradeGenius.co forward slash adapt2030.